Amen. It is Kairos time. Amen. How many are experiencing Kairos time? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. So many of them coming up with testimonies of Kairos time. Last Sunday, I got to hear uh, one of our church members. She was telling us that uh, she met a friend of hers uh, whom she had not seen for about 37 years. Am I right? 37 years. So it so happened that she was at the right time in the right place and she met her, through her, she met all her friends after 37 years, the group of her friends. And she started contacting them and she got an opportunity to comfort, to share God's word. Amen. What a Kairos time. Amen. So I'm experiencing this and so many of them are coming and saying the other day, even you met your friend, right? After so many years we met and he introduced me to them and we shared the gospel with them. And Pastor Abraham, the other day he was just going by to buy some uh, vegetables and on the way he saw a friend of his whom he had not seen for 13 years. And he was look out for that person. He had no phone number. He could not contact him on any social media as such. So, but then uh, his fr he wanted to get in touch with him because uh, he was an expert in some things. So, he wanted to find him where he was. And after 13 years, he finds him exactly <laughs> in Cairo's time. And it was a time and season for us to meet that person. And it was amazing, uh, amazing time of get together and he got to know him and it's a blessing. We are a blessing to each other, to him as well as to us. So, I want to encourage all of you. These three testimonies that I shared this morning to tell you when you go out, maybe just to buy some grocery or vegetable or maybe you're going for shopping or you're just going out for some work or walking, jogging, fitness, expect the Kairos time for you to be in the right time in right place. Amen. For you to be a blessing to someone. Amen. For you to share the good news, the gospel of Christ. Amen. For you to tell what God has revealed to you to be established in righteousness. For you to go and explain how today you have become black cat commando. Amen. So this is your Kairos time. So every time you walk out of your house, just expect to meet someone in need. Expect to meet someone whom God is bringing your way. Expect your burning bush movement. Amen. Because God has clearly spoken. This shall be the Kairos time. All those who are unmarried, expect you to see your future spouse. Amen. Because, because it's Kairos time. Expect you to meet the business opportunity. Amen. So go with an expectant heart because your expectation is not in you. Your expectation is in God who makes time and chance happen to you in your favor. Amen. Glory to God. So I've been doing this for a few years and I've seen uh, tremendous uh, miracles and testimonies. Whenever we shift our house or whenever I go to any place, I pray that God help me to be a blessing. Help me meet someone where I can share God's word. I've been doing that for a few years. When I join my workplace, I share God's word and I bring my colleagues to God's, word, God's kingdom. I share the gospel of Christ and I've seen my colleagues being saved. And then uh, you all know when I, when, when I used to go to gym, I found uh, in aerobic center is where I found our Geetanjali, <laughs> our church leader Geetanjali. So, so I was gymming and I was uh, doing aerobics and then I saw a girl, uh, she had such a lovely smile and I thought like I should really give her the gospel. So it was Kairos time for me to be there, for her to be there and she was from a non-Christian background and today she serves in the house of God, amen. And the same thing when we our house. I was asking the Lord, God, help me to go to a house where I can share the gospel to my neighbors. And uh, you, know, you know, the house I went, 
to one particular house, door number five. So from that house, we got Priyanka, we got Satish, we got Kashmira. So that house where I went, they all were my neighbors. So I shared gospel with them and they all ended up in our church. And today, uh, they all are leaders in our church. Amen. They've grown in God's word. Amen. Uh, how amazing it is, right? And now recently, a couple of years ago when I shifted, again I went, I prayed, I asked God, God help me to go to a place where I can be a blessing to that person. Who is that person you want me to meet? Amen. God has called you as a seed of Abraham. You are blessed to be a blessing to the world. And God wants you to go to a particular family, go to a particular individual, because for that person it is Kairos time through you because God is a spirit you are a body in partnership he needs body to work so as a body of God so you go and you work so I, I, I recently like a couple of years ago I went there we ended up meeting the entire family of sister Margaret the whole family her children come and attend our uh, Sunday school and she she's coming with us for the, for the work of the Lord house of the Lord amen so uh, wherever uh, I have gone I have always experienced this and now this year being the year of Kairos time, I want to encourage you that it is very, very much possible it is, that God is going to use you more than a televangelist, more than any preacher, more than anybody whom you know. You know why? Because that preacher, that speaker cannot meet the person whom only you can meet. Because you are that walking Bible to that individual. You are the televangelist. You are that preacher. You are that child of God who is going to share uh, his love amen so uh, go and meet people when you step out go with that mindset so i'm excited to meet someone whom god shows me this morning amen go be a blessing heal the world amen so when you see someone say just pray uh, speak god's word god has called you to lay hands on the sick amen you just lay hands you, you don't even have to pray the bible says lay hands on the sick it does not say Lay hands, do fasting prayer, kneel down, stand, make sure they stand, pull all their hair out, and then they get healed. <laughs> Does the Bible say that? Absolutely not. The Bible says, lay hands on the sick. Simple as that. You just lay hand on the sick because you have the power of God that flows. When you lay hand, they get, they get sick. Amen? So expect the Kairos time. Amen? Glory to God. So I have something very, very amazing to share with all of you. You have come all the way traveling uh, on time to hear God's word. Uh, God values that. I believe Holy Spirit will speak to me and through me to everyone seated over here and also those who are watching us online. Uh, we see that there are so many fads and ads in the world. Uh, quick fix, get rich. Uh, do three days, seven days, five days of workout, and then you become thin like this, before and after. There's so many ads. And you're like, three days they became thin? Let me also try the diet. Let me also do everything. After three days, you see, there's no change. And then you realize that was a lie. And then someone says, quick fix. You invest your money here. You take up my course. You know, so many courses on ads. They say, you take up my course. I'll teach you how to become rich. I'll teach you how to make your first one crore. And then you're like, wow, he's going to teach me the first one crore. And you go. And then you realize he himself has not made his one crore. And he is a bogus. <laughs> so, so many ads and fads in the market, people are just coming up and the media, entertainment media, social media, bombarding us with so many ads and trying to give us quick fix, fix solutions. Let me tell you, quick fix solutions do not work. Shortcuts will always cut you short. There are no shortcuts to make money. There are no shortcuts to become fit. <laughs> there are no shortcuts to have uh, good contacts or good relationship. You need to spend time when you want to develop good relationship. You need to spend time when you want to develop healthy relationship with your spouse, with your children, with your family. You need to spend time consistently, regularly, then you have a fit body. <laughs> you need to spend time consistently so that you have consistent good eating habits so it, it is seen in your body. You need to be consistent in saving, in investment, in studying God's word, believing, application that makes you 
prosperous day by day like Isaac you become richer amen God's word says he has already prospered us he has already healed us he has already blessed us it is a done deal it is finished work of the cross of Calvary no doubt about it now that it is done that does not mean we do nothing about it why what he has done is related to your spiritual activity it is the work of the spirit in your spirit man you're complete you're healed you're blessed you're prosperous you are perfect you're holy you're righteous you have right standing before God you're seated with Christ you're redeemed you're cleansed you're restored in your spirit man but in your body that is not seen why it is not seen in your body because of unrenewed mind so as you renew your mind the truth the reality of the work of cross of Calvary will be evident in your body in your finances in all the areas of your life that is why we say in all you're getting get understanding amen so whatever you need there are so many quick quick fix solutions that the world is offering so I have one solution for all of you one single solution to become thin to become fit to become beautiful to become rich to get married to have big business whatever is your need this morning to have good relationship to have obedient children whatever is your need as a parent as a young parent as a grandparent as single as married children whatever is your need I have one solution to everything are you all excited to know what is that one solution from God's word amen all you have to do is eat I say you to become rich you eat to become slim you eat <laughs> to become healthy you eat <laughs> to have good relationship you eat you eat pastor I eat everything and I become fat <laughs> so what is that should I, I should eat let's see what the word of God says let's quickly go to the first verse for today the responsibility of the prophet Ezekiel chapter 3 all of you put your eyes on that online audience one to two moreover he said to me son of man eat what you find eat this scroll and go speak to the house of Israel so I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat the scroll amen so God visits uh, Ezekiel in a dream and God speaks to dream it's a vision for Ezekiel and God tells to Ezekiel son of man eat what you find and what is he finding he finds the scroll that is the word of God the Old Testament at that time he finds the word of God and God says eat I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat if you don't open your mouth he cannot stuff it in right how many parents have small kids if your child is closing the mouth it's so hard to feed so what we do we distract we dance we do everything possible for the baby to open mouth <laughs> that's exactly what God is doing <laughs> God sends all the preachers all styles of preachers everything possible so that you open your mouth and he can feed you the food <laughs> amen so he says open your mouth so when you open your mouth he will feed you the scroll eat the scroll amen so eat the scroll is the solution amen can you all repeat after me eat the scroll amen eat the scroll Amen. I, uh, will you say to God, God, I open my mouth. I open my mouth. Feed me the scroll. Amen. Eat the scroll. Amen. Glory to God. So eat the scroll is the title of my message for this morning. Eat the scroll for everything. Quick fix one solution. You want to become rich? Eat the scroll. You want to become thin? Eat the scroll. You want to get married? Eat the scroll. You want to have good relationship? Eat the scroll. You want to know how to bring up your children in the ways of the Lord? Eat the scroll. One single solution, eat the scroll. Morning, eat the scroll. Night, eat the scroll. Every day, every time, eat the scroll. Eat the word of God. Amen. That's why the book of Jeremiah says, I found your words and I ate them. Your word is to me joy and refreshing of my heart. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Your word brings joy to me. Amen. It's refreshing. Amen. The word of God. I found them. What's the first thing you do when you read God's word? 
you eat it so when you read god's word when you're reading either new testament or old testament don't read with law mentality what should i do like what the world is saying do this to get this so when you're reading god's word don't say what should i do it is done by christ so when you read god's word you have to say i eat god's word so i eat it so your main thing the first thing that you do when you read the bible when you hear god's word is that you eat it so how do you eat it will be next question shall i tear the bible page and put it in my mouth <laughs> how do i eat god's word shall i give you a solution on that go to the next verse ezekiel chapter 3 3 to 4 i'll continue and he said to me son of man feed your belly and fill your stomach with this scroll that i give you so i ate and it was in my mouth like honey <laughs> in sweetness then he said to me son of man go to the house of israel and speak with my words to them amen did you see the title of this uh, passage what was the title of the passage the responsibility of the prophet amen so the first calling of a pastor the first calling you all call pastor right you all call me pastor do you know what's the meaning of pastor some of you knows i think some of you who are from uh, non christian background still do not know so I, i thought maybe i can tell it the meaning of pastor is shepherd because jesus is called good shepherd the great shepherd we are his under shepherds we are his under shepherds so when you call someone pastor you're telling them shepherd that means that person is shepherding what does a shepherd do he makes me lie down beside green pastures so that you can be fed very well so the responsibility of a pastor the responsibility of a prophet is that he feeds the sheep not beats the sheep <laughs> amen not beating <laughs> with brimstone hailstone fire coming from heaven <laughs> or the preaching of the law he feeds the sheep with goodness of his of god's word which is honey and sweetness to your soul amen so it says he must feed the sheep first what he must do he must eat how much he eats that much he can feed out of his fullness his heart will speak out of the abundance of the overflowing my cup runneth over when it runs over that is what the sheep is feeding upon amen so he ate it he ate it and then he fed amen that's exactly what i'm doing this morning feeding god's word now let's understand how you can eat how i am eating show them the next verse ezekiel chapter 3 and he said unto me son of man all my words that i speak unto thee receive with thy heart and with thine ears hear it says all the words that i speak receive with thy heart i said you have to eat it has to enter your heart so how do you receive it in your belly how do you receive it in your heart show them ezekiel 3:10 in nlt version then he say, he added son of man let all my words sink deep into your own heart first listen to them carefully for yourself so now you tell me how do you eat god's word how it can sink deeply in your heart how god's word can sink deeply in your belly in your heart the answer is immediately the next line says listen carefully with your ears so how you eat god's word you eat god's word by listening to god's word carefully pay attention to my words my son proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 onwards it says pay attention to my words listen to them carefully because when you listen to them carefully the first step to eating god's word is listening carefully with no distractions with no whatsapp with no phone next to you you are not focusing on what to cook what to eat you are focusing on god's word you are giving your 100% undivided attention listen carefully so when you listen carefully that is how you eat so how things get into your heart by hearing by seeing 
by meditating by speaking these are the four ways the word whatever you are hearing either the things of the world or things of the word can get into your heart i have taken a beautiful sermon on this a uh, couple of years ago god spoke to me on heart mouth connection heart ear connection heart mind connection all the series are there on uh, uh, youtube you can listen to that so there is heart mouth connection and there is heart mind connection ear connection that means what you hear what you see what you speak what you meditate gets into your heart eventually so it's very important firstly what you hear faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing continuous hearing of god's word so the bible says listen carefully that is why god has given commandment for the body of christ that you gather week after week and listen to god's word so you listen carefully as you listen you eat now you show them jeremiah chapter 15 verse 16 the very verse that i told you you all must memorize this verse such a beautiful scripture i found your words and i ate them shall we all read the scripture together you all can see that and read your words were found and i ate them and your word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart for i am called by your name o lord god of hosts i made it personalized rather saying your words were found i say i found your words and i ate them amen so this is uh, such a powerful solution to anything that you need in life because the word that you eat is what show them john 6:35 it says jesus is john 6:48 i am the bread of life john 6:35 it says the one who comes to me though he i am the bread of life he will never be hungry he will never be thirsty amen so you eat god's word and jesus said to them i am the bread of life he who comes to me shall never hunger and he who believes in me shall never thirst do you remember that lady the woman at the well <laughs> that woman at the well she came to draw the water she was living with uh, she had married five husbands now she was living with the one who was not her husband and she comes to draw water she comes to drink and jesus how beautiful jesus passes by and comes to meet her i like always that he always comes your way it is not you who go in search of him it is he who came in search of you he came her way asking her can i have some water to drink and then she looks at him and immediately she analyzes that he's a rabbi he's looking like a leader and he is a prophet and she talks all spiritual things <laughs> when she talks all spiritual things jesus immediately uh, talks to her in a sweet way and then he says why don't you go call your husband and then she is so honest and she to- tells jesus jesus i have no husband and rather condemning her and saying don't you know you have five husband you are an adulterer you are a, you are a woman living in sin no condemnation absolutely no condemnation in christ he says you have said very well he always finds a reason to appreciate you to pat your back that is what i see in jesus so no matter what you have done no matter how far you have run away you have come to house of god this morning you're listening to this word he's patting your back and saying i'm so glad you made it i knew you will make it that's exactly what god says so he's so happy he's ex- he's he's uh, encouraging her and she's so impressed and he he tells her uh, what is the water that you're going to give i will give you a water you'll never thirst you'll never be hungry again she says can you please give me that water so i'll never have to come to this well to draw the water he says i am the living waters i am the bread that came from heaven so the bible says he is the bread of life he is the word of god he is the word that we eat amen so we eat him how do we eat him we find him in the word we eat him only one tangible way that is the holy communion holy communion is the only tangible thing that you touch you feel the body and the blood of jesus i'll park it aside for next week uh, for uh, continuing on that for today let's focus on the word of god in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god so that word you eat so you study god's word so the first thing that you do is you study god's word you hear god's word you meditate on god's word so when you do that you have solution for life how it is going to happen once you experience it then you will not ask that question 
once you experience how god's word works you will not ask that question i'll give you some of my testimonies you will you will get to know before i could share my testimony i want to give you one powerful story from the bible the book of luke chapter 10 i'll teach you that story and then uh, i will uh, help you understand how it is so important and it impresses heart of god jesus came to a family to their house mary martha lazarus a very dear family he comes to their house when he comes to their house who has come now the word himself has come the word that became flesh has come the bread of heaven has come the bread of life has come now the bread of life has come there were two sisters and one brother right mary and martha what mary did the moment she saw the bread of life she went and sat at his feet and she said i want to eat you and she was sitting and she was listening to his word and the other sister martha what she did she quickly ran to kitchen and she said let me cook for you let me cook the best meal let me cook the biryani let me cook the cake let me cook the best dish unfortunately martha had forgotten just one chapter before luke chapter 9 jesus with just five loaves and two fish he had already fed 5000 men plus probably 5000 women plus probably 10000 children he has fed i i don't know what happened to her how come she forgot and she thought i have to make the best food she went into kitchen and she was busy cooking for jesus and she is coming out and she is accusing jesus saying lord don't you care that my sister has left me alone to cook for you what did jesus say at that time let's see luke chapter 10 such a beautiful portion now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and certain women named martha welcomed him into her house and she said a sister called mary who also sat at jesus feet and heard his word continue but martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said lord do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone therefore tell her to help me and jesus answered and said to her martha martha you are worried and troubled about many things continue but one thing is needed and mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her only one thing is needed what is that one thing is needed to sit at the feet of jesus and hear his word martha was busy cooking so who impressed jesus the one who was cooking for jesus or the one who came hungry before jesus the one who came hungry to jesus impressed jesus amen and jesus said one thing is needed what is needed to come hungry and eat the scroll very important because martha was not eating she was busy cooking she was busy serving she was busy distracted she was not eating so she became agitated she was angry blame game upset depressed are you able to relate when you don't spend enough time in god's word you become upset angry with others agitated blaming god and blaming mary that's what martha did right she blamed her sister mary and she blamed god so you become agitated blaming everyone around because you are not spending enough time eating you have to eat god's word because when you don't eat god's word you are not fully fed very commonly people say that a hungry man is a an angry man <laughs> so if you are not if you are if you are thinking you are hungry physically if that is going to satisfy let me tell you nothing satisfies this world is searching for solutions they are thinking entertainment media will satisfy social media will satisfy friends will satisfy colleagues will satisfy shopping will satisfy 
<laughs> makeup will satisfy nothing in this world satisfies that's why jesus told to that samaritan woman that woman at the well he told to that lady the one who drinks of me will never be thirsty unless you eat the scroll unless you drink the living waters you will never be filled otherwise you're always hungry hungry for love in wrong places hungry for love to find your identity promotion achievement position power money hungry in wrong places hungry to buy all the best possible dresses to make you look good hungry you are so hungry and dissatisfied disappointed so you are agitated you are upset you are angry and jesus is saying you are too distracted you are looking and finding things in wrong place you are too hungry come to me all those who are weary come to me i will take your burden off come to me i'll feed you like stall fed calves <laughs> amen amen glory to god stall fed calves where you don't have to work you're just stall fed someone is feeding you someone is growing the grass someone is cutting the grass someone is bringing the grass and putting that's what jesus is doing because he's a great shepherd a good shepherd your job is to eat amen eat the scroll so when you eat the scroll you're not dissatisfied you're not agitated you're not angry have you any time found when you eat your meal when you eat your breakfast lunch dinner whatever you have had the best buffet you have had the best meal and then you all of a sudden feel it's not enough i am feeling somewhat not enough it it can be the prompting of the spirit that you are dissatisfied whenever i feel like that i have had the best meal i have had the best chapati best gravy and then i feel not enough something i'm not satisfied after eating whenever you feel you can take that as uh, um, uh, as uh, uh, as what holy spirit is trying to inspire holy spirit is trying to speak holy spirit is trying to tell you you are not satisfied you are hungry and what i do at that time is i go and take god's word and dig more deeper no day goes by without studying god's word that, that's uh, uh, that's there but then whenever i feel something not enough feeling hungry feeling like something is missing so i know the only person who can satisfy only person who can fill only person who can comfort only person who can uh, give me my hunger to the brim to the full who can fill me is god's word so go and eat god's word when you eat god's word let me tell you it will calm your fears it will calm your agitation it will calm your anxiety it will calm all the things that you've been thinking the planning now you depend on him amen glory to god i want to show you a very very powerful scripture show them the book of matthew the bible says blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be filled the but the bible says you have to be hungry and thirsty you have to be hungry and thirsty for what hunger and thirst for righteousness and they shall be filled the word filled here is the english bible filled when you see that in greek it says the one who is gorged you have ate enough sometimes you say that i have ate too much i have ate too much i cannot take another morsel you have gorged full so you must eat god's word you must eat god's word and the bible says when you are hungry for his righteousness so i was asking god god you told me to eat the scroll all of you please listen to me very important point god you told to eat the scroll eat the scroll for anything that you need so how do you eat the scroll every day you listen to god's word so kindly make this decision as soon as you wake up rather you go to your whatsapp your instagram or call a friend or check your email or comb your hair or go to the washroom the first thing you do is you open your phone push play go to your spotify or youtube pastor priya abraham all the messages are there absolutely free 
kindly take time to listen. You can just be listening while you're driving, be listening while you're brushing, listening while you're combing, listening while you're getting ready, listening while you're in the kitchen, listening while you're holding a baby, listening while you're gymming, listening while you're running. You can keep listening, give your ears. Amen? So keep listening. So as you're listening, I told, when you're listening, you're eating God's word. That's what Mary did. One thing is needed. One thing is needed. Keep listening to God's word. Very important. That's what Mary did. So one thing is needed that is eating the scroll. So I was asking God, God, eating the scroll is needed. Now you're saying I must be hungry for the scroll, right? That's what it means. I must be hungry for the scroll. Why didn't you say blessed are those who are hungry for the scroll or hungry for the word? Why did you say blessed are those who are hungry for righteousness? Amen? Hungry. So I was asking God, what is this hunger? See, there are two types of hunger that I have found, that I, have, that I was meditating. That is, one type of hunger is your physical hunger, right? You eat your chapati, you eat your rice, you eat your pasta, whatever, noodles, you eat your chicken. One type of hunger that is to satisfy. Food is broken down in your mouth, it's broken down in your stomach. It satisfies your body. The other type of hunger is your soulish hunger. Emotional hunger, mental hunger, right? Intellectual hunger, your soulish hunger. How do you satisfy soulish hunger? People think by satisfying soulish hunger is going on media, going on Google, going and reading something unwanted. You satisfy your soulish hunger by reading God's word and even your physical hunger cannot be satisfied by bread. Matthew chapter 4 verse number 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God because John 6 48 says, I am the bread of life. If you're depressed, you're not able to balance your job and your family. You're not able to balance your work and your finances. You're not able to balance your ch children and yourself. You're not able to balance your time. I want to tell you, the solution to that is you spend some time eating. Once you nourish yourself, you have all the energy to do all the other work. Amen? So first you have to eat. So you listen to God's word and then you study God's word. Whatever you have heard, let's not be the hearers of the word only. Let's be the doers of the word. So once you hear the word, read the word, meditate the word, confess the word, act on the word. Unless this entire process is complete, then your hearing will not be effectual. Amen? Amen? So act on the word. So I was asking why to hunger to righteousness. So hunger is for the physical body. So yes, I get my word. I get the word. So I must hunger for the word. It says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Oh, it was such a powerful revelation that God was just pouring it. Hunger and thirst for righteousness, it says. You have to be hungry for righteousness. What is righteousness? We've been studying series on series, right? We just completed so many series on that. But I, this, this, this topic, I think it, it's never ending, amen? So hungry for righteousness. What is righteousness? His righteousness is the word himself. Who's the word himself? Jesus is the righteousness, right? What the Bible says? He made us his righteousness. Amen. What God did? God made him sin who knew no sin. So that you who knew no goodness, who knew no holiness can be made his righteousness in Christ Jesus. So Jesus is his righteousness. Amen. Jesus is his right doing. The righteous right hand of God. Jesus is everything that God did. Amen. The right doing. His doing. Not your doing. So the Bible says you have to seek his righteousness. Hungry for his righteousness. How do I explain this? Hungry for his righteousness. Listen to this. When you are doing any work. You are working in your office, you're doing your business, you're cooking, you're taking care of your children, you're teaching, whatever work you're doing, whatever you're doing, you're trying to become fit, your fitness, whatever you're doing, may you not seek your doing. Don't seek your doing. What can I do to become fit? What can I do to become strong? What can I do 
to become rich what can i do to make my children obedient what can i do when you say i me myself you know i doing is self righteousness which are like fill the racks his righteousness is not fill the racks his righteousness is robe of righteousness amen so you seek his righteousness when you seek his righteousness and say god i want you my moments are in your uh, my every moment is in your hand my times are in your hands i seek your righteousness for today's doing for today's cooking for today's bringing up my children for today's doing my project for today's work i seek your righteousness when you say i seek your righteousness every day you're focusing on his doing not your doing you're focusing on jesus doing in and through you he is the spirit you are the body are you able to relate he is the spirit you are the body so the body is cooperating with the spirit amen because god cannot do unless you cooperate because he needs a body here on earth you are saying god i am your vessel use me i give you my vocal cords i give you my body i give you my mind i give you my finance i give you my life because everything is yours anyways so i give you everything i submit i surrender i submit so you are saying god i seek your righteousness in every day of my doing so i seek your doing in raising my children i seek your doing in doing my business i seek your doing in my health i seek your doing in my career i seek your righteousness when you are hungry for his righteousness so how do you seek his righteousness how you are hungry when you are studying his word when you are when you are hearing his word you are focusing not on what you can do i told you when you read god's word when you hear god's word first thing i told you are not focusing on what can i do about this there is nothing you can do about it because jesus has finished everything you cannot add something to what jesus has done it's not that a plus b equals to c it's not your b that god needs to make it to c what jesus has done is equal to a is equals to complete it's finished tetelestai it is finished it means it's completely complete there's nothing that you can add about it but what is it saying the works of faith works of faith is very important not to add to what jesus has done works of faith is to receive what jesus has done are you able to relate works of faith is not to add to what jesus has done if you are thinking i must add to what jesus has done i must help jesus let me help god to heal me let me help god to make me rich no you cannot help god your acts of faith is helping you to receive your prayer is helping you to receive your action of faith corresponding action of faith is very important for you to receive that is what you are saying i i put my faith in god to receive so you are hungry for his righteousness you are hungry for what god has done amen you saying god i am hungry for you when you say i am hungry the bible says he will fill you amen he will fill you to the brim that's what it says blessed are all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness they shall be satisfied they shall be filled so when you are hungry he is filling you with his righteousness that means he is filling your body he is filling your soul and you are not agitated you are not upset you are full you are full of eating god's word so when you are reading god's word what are you seeking his righteousness when you are hearing god's word what are you hungry for his righteousness when you are doing your corresponding action what are you hungry for his righteousness when you let me simplify it when you are running example when you are running to to for your fitness you are running you are jogging don't think okay i'm running so that i can lose weight so i can become fit when you are running when you are doing workout what are you doing you are saying i am hungry for his doing in me are you able to relate to me you got it so when you are saving money you are saving your investing money i am investing money this money is going to be calculated into 12 months into 10 years or it is going to become this much rich oh, okay fine so i am focusing <laughs> on how i can be rich okay if you are focusing on how i can be rich 
Ecclesiastic 9-11. Ecclesiastic 9-11. The race is not to the swift, the battle is not to the strong, nor the bread to the men of understanding, nor the favor to the man of skill. Time and chance happen to them. So it is God who makes it in your favor. So when you are investing, when you are saving, what you are saying? God, I seek his righteousness. He became poor and made me rich. He became poor and made me rich. Thank you for making me rich. So you are investing by saying, I seek his righteousness. I am hungry for his righteousness. You are so hungry that you are saving every month. You are so hungry that you are investing in right places. You are so hungry that you are going and doing your business. You are so hungry that you are able to do a lot of things. You are hungry for his righteousness. So everything what you are doing. When you are managing, juggling between roles, you are managing your house, you are managing your work, it's too overwhelming to do. You are saying, God, I am not doing. I am doing because... I am hungry for your righteousness because you are doing it through me. Philippians 2, 13. It is he who will give you desire. It is he who will cause you to will and to do. So when you are juggling between the roles and you are saying, God, I am not able to do this. And you are saying, I am doing it because my God is doing it. I am hungry for his righteousness. I am hungry for his doing. What is righteousness? It is his doing, right doing, perfect doing. Amen. So every day to day life, when you're raising a child, you're saying, God, it's not my doing. I am raising. I am just a body. So you're hungry for his righteousness. So you're meditating on God's word. You're meditating on God's word. Everything that you ate, you've been eating, right? You're eating. So God is saying, be hungry for righteousness. When you're hungry for righteousness, God says he will fill you. What he will fill you with? The scroll. He will fill you with the word. What he said? He opened his mouth. He was very hungry. Hungry baby will do what? Open the mouth. That's how it is, right? All believers, when they get baptized, when they accept, they are so hungry. Like, like young babies, right? Small babies, infants. They are so hungry, opening mouth. Anything you put in their mouth, they'll eat. Anything you pour, water, you pour them formula, you, you pour any milk, anything, cow milk, donkey's milk, anything you pour in their mouth, they drink, Right? That's how believers are. They're so hungry. And it is so important that you give them perfect milk. Amen. Amen? That's very important. That's why WHO says you have to give mother's milk. Don't give anything else other than mother's milk. Right? Why? Give the perfect milk. That's exactly the Bible says. Be like the infants in the Peter. It says like, desiring hungry for the milk. And what the Bible says? He feeds you. He satisfies you. Perfect. So believers are so hungry. And when someone preaches mixture, when someone preaches law, when someone preaches anger, when someone preaches fire coming down on you and you dying for doing something, when you preach, so everybody listens to that and receives that. And when you eat all the junk, what happens? You become unhealthy. Right? You become sick. Right? So it's very important you feed the right food. It's very important you eat the right word. It is very important you listen to the right message. So that helps you to write believing. Amen? And that indeed helps you to write living. Amen? So eat the scroll. It is a definite article. Okay? Not eat anything, everything. Not eating all the negative news. Don't eat all the news that pops up on Google. Eat the scroll. So eat the word. So make sure that you hear God's word. So open your Bible to that particular scripture. Read that scripture. And in your everyday doing, say, I am hungry for your righteousness. I am hungry for your word. That's exactly what you do when you're taking Holy Communion. You're saying, God, I seek his doing for my salvation. Amen, amen, amen. So I seek his doing for my poverty to turn into prosperity for the sickness to turn into healing I seek his doing so what you do every Sunday after Sunday we take holy communion we eat the scroll right the tangible way of eating the scroll is the holy communion and every day every minute eating the scroll is reading your Bible so make this a commitment and decision that you eat the scroll listen to God's word as much as you can you can never say you're full you can never say I have done enough of reading I have done enough of eating can we anytime say I've done enough of eating enough of reading no right every day we eat right three times sometimes six times right so I want you to read another one very beautiful scripture show them uh, uh, Deuteronomy verse 7 to 9 for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land a land of brooks of water, of fountain and springs that flow out of valley and hills, a land of wheat, 
and barley of wines and fig trees and pomegranate a land of olive oil and honey amen next verse ninth verse a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity in which you will lack nothing can you all repeat after me in which you will lack nothing a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper god promised to israelites i am taking you to a land to a promised land where you will have so much of abundance of things to eat and you will lack nothing you know it's a picture of new testament because old testament is a shadow of new testament it's a picture of new testament now are you in the promised land or you're waiting for promised land to go to canaan to fly down to canaan we all are in promised land right we receive jesus and we all are in promised land right in jesus you are in promised land amen so in jesus god has given you all the best of the food because he is the righteousness you hunger for he is the word that you eat so god is saying when you eat him you eat everything that your body needs everything that your uh, organs need everything that your knees your bones everything that your hair your eyes everything that your every part of your body needs you find in him you eat him so when you eat him the bible says you lack nothing did you see that in the book of deuteronomy you lack nothing it says so you you want to you want to have good family life eat him you lack nothing you want good health eat him you lack nothing you want fitness eat the scroll you lack nothing you want success this book of law shall not depart from your mouth you shall meditate on it day and night and your ways will be prosperous so you eat the word meditate on it day and night you lack nothing the lord has blessed you the lord has lifted his countenance on you the lord is gracious to you you shall always be the head and not the tail you shall always be above and never below you shall lend and shall never borrow whatsoever your hand does it shall prosper as you eat the scroll you will lack nothing physically emotionally mentally intellectually nothing you shall lack because he came to give you life and life in abundance i declare that as you eat the scroll the word of god you're becoming stronger younger healthier and more beautiful for the glory of the lord growing like a palm tree to be fruitful in all seasons at all times the love of the father the grace of our lord jesus christ and the sweet communion of the holy spirit is always with us now and forevermore amen shalom christ is in you amen we believe you were blessed by this message our vision is to make known the mystery of the gospel which is christ in you you can be a blessing by partnering with priya abraham ministries to share this good news to partner visit priyaabraham.org/partner